Hi guys, I got a question this morning. Somebody sent me an email. They said they've got a bypass button on their instrument and it bypasses an effect. And they'd like to also be able to bypass that effect with a key switch. So in this little video, I'm just gonna demonstrate how I'd go about doing that. And based on the fact that they've told me already that they have a bypass button that is working, it's bypassing the effect, my approach is going to be to reuse that same code. So we're gonna add both parts, we're going to have the button bypassing and then we're going to make it use a key switch instead or as well. So let's look at how we can do that. So we'll start with uh, on init as usual and I've just realized I'm not set for KSP here, let me just change that. There we go. And we'll create a button and we'll just call it bypass. And uh, that's pretty much the first bit done. Now we just need to make this button bypass an effect. So we'll have on UI control and then we'll put the button name in there. And then we're just going to use the usual set engine par uh, command to bypass it. And the first thing we have to give this is the parameters. It's going to be engine par, uh, what is it? Engine par effect bypass, I think. Then it needs the value. So that's just going to be the button because the button is always going to be zero or one. And then we have to give it the group. Now this is an a, a, a instrument effect. So it doesn't need a group number, so we put minus one. If this was a group effect, then you'd have to put whatever the group number is in there or put this in a loop to apply it to multiple groups. Then it needs the slot. Let's say the, the effect is in the first slot, so that's going to be zero. And then it needs to decide, uh, we need to decide if it's going to be an insert or a send effect. And in this case, we're going to do it as an insert. If we were to do it as a send, we would have to change this parameter to control par uh, send effect bypass. Let me just, yeah, send effect bypass. Uh, but we're going to put this in the insert slot. Okay, so let's see if that works. So I'm just going to hit F5. I'm going to open up contact. Create a new instrument. And we'll just pop this in and see if it works. So there's our button there. And I'm just going to insert an effect. It doesn't really matter what it is. And when we hit this button, it should bypass it. There we go. And now when we hit it again, it should be unbypassed. Now, as a little side note, if you want this to work the other way around, so when the button's off, this is bypassed. All you have to do is add one and minus at the beginning there and that's going to flip the value around so whenever it's one it's going to be zero and whenever it's zero it's going to be one so now when this is on it's not going to be uh, bypassed and when we turn it off it's going to bypass but we'll get rid of that we're actually going to use this in just a second as you'll see so that's the first stage so next we need to create a key switch so let's have it as c0 so we'll, we'll declare a constant and we'll just call it key switch, keep it nice and simple. And C0 is note number 24. So we'll put in note number 24 there. And let's color it just so we can see it on the keyboard. We'll make it red. And we'll just see if that's worked. So there's our key switch there, C0. So now all we need to do is, at a basic level, is whenever this key switch is pressed, we need to call this same line of code. But I don't like to repeat code, so we're going to see how we can reuse the code we've already got. But we'll start off with on note, and this is where we are going to detect if the key switch has been pressed. And we say if event note, that's the incoming note that's triggered the on note callback, we say if that is equal to the key switch so basically saying if c0 has been pressed then what we need to do is uh, well here we're going to do the bypass so we'll say do bypass 
that's just sudo code. We'll, we'll, we'll put the code in in a second. And then we want to exit the callback because we don't need to process, do any further processing inside on note once this, uh, when the key switch is triggered. So we can just exit after that. So one thing we could do is just copy this line of code and paste it in there. And then we've got to obviously change this for a zero or a one. And uh, well, let's see how we can do that. So I'm going to leave it this like this just for now, but this is going to change. So we're still passing in the button, but first of all, we have to toggle the button and we've just seen how to do that. So now the button's going to toggle whenever the key switch is pressed. So if it's one, it'll be zero. If it's zero, it'll be one. And then we're calling the same line of code to uh, actually carry out the bypass. So I'm just going to, what have I done there? Um, oh, trying to do, do it too quickly. Need to actually uh, change the value of it. There we go. So the button is going to equal itself and then uh, one minus itself to toggle it. So we'll just uh, paste that into contact now. So this will actually um, toggle the switch up there and it's performing the bypass as well. So this is one way of doing it. But like I said, we are repeating code. Now let's say you decide to change the effect slot or you change it from a send effect. You have to do it here and here or if it's over here in, in that part. Basically you've got two bits of code you've got to maintain. And I always like to reduce the amount of code I've got to maintain by as much as uh, as much as possible. So we're gonna use a function. And this could be a task function, it could be an inline function. I'm gonna use just one of contact standard functions for this. And we'll just call it bypass effect. And it's basically just gonna take this same code. And we can remove it from here and in both places where we were previously calling that code, we can just put this function in. We have to use the call command because uh, one of the uh, standard functions. And uh, I don't even think we need the uh, parentheses on the end actually, but I just put them in out of force of habit. And I'm gonna hit F5 there. And it should work in exactly the same way as we just saw. So we can toggle the effect from here. And we can toggle it down here as well, and it toggles the switch on the screen. And obviously you can expand this to work with multiple switches and multiple buttons. Um, let, let's have a quick look at that actually, um, because the, the actual question I received was for two effects. So if I was doing it for two effects, because I can see what's going to happen is if you guys want to do it for two effects, you're going to copy this and then put in another key switch like that and then expand this out and that's it's going to get a bit messy so let me show you the the slightly neater way of doing it because obviously that way will work but there is a, a cleaner way of doing it so we declare an array we're going to call it key switches uh, let's just call it key s and let's say we're going to have two key switches but this could be as many as you want and they're going to be on keys 24 and 25 we can get rid of this one now we don't need that let's color those keys again uh, actually, we'll need a little variable called i for us to be able to loop. There we go. So, for i, and th these for loops are only available if you're using the Sublime Text Editor or Nils Lieberg's uh, K-Script Editor. They won't work with normal contact, but I'm expecting you to be using one of them anyway. And we're just going to do it for each key switch. So that's our for loop. Okay, so we're coloring each key switch here. Now, the only line we have to change in, um, the, sorry, the only part we have to change in this if statement is instead of just checking for one key switch, we want to check for either of these two. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a search command. And this is for searching for a value within an array. So we're going to put the array name first, that's ks. Then we're going to put the value we're searching for, which is event note. Now if it finds a value, it's going to return the index. So it's either going to be 0 or 1. If it doesn't find the value, it's going to return minus 1. So what we can say is we can just say if it's not minus 1. And that means it's found a value. We don't know what the value is, but we know it is a key switch. So not minus 1. Uh, we'll need two bypass buttons as well. Let's, uh, let's do that. Bypass button 1, bypass button 2. And as we're done with the key switches, I'm actually going to create an array for these. 
and we'll just call it buttons and that's gonna have two elements and we're gonna put the IDs of the buttons in there Okay, uh, let me see what we need to do next. I'm winging this, by the way. This is uh, just on the fly, so I'm just thinking the best way to approach this. Okay, based on whichever button has, whichever key switch has triggered this callback, we need to decide which button to, uh, to, to toggle. And we can do that using the index. So we can, uh, we get the index from search here. So we can go to our buttons array and then we need to know which button it is and we know we can do that using this same bit of code so we'll just paste that in there because we've already checked that there is going to be a value and this is going to return the index of the key switches array but that's actually going to match our buttons array because they both have two and we put the buttons in the correct order. So whichever key switch is, if it's 20, if, if key switch 24 is triggered that's going to give us an index of zero here which is going to and an index of zero in our buttons array is going to give us the first bypass button. And then we can say we want its value. So we have to do the value. And then we're going to basically do the same thing we've done down here. It's just a little more long-winded because we've just got to copy that. Do the one minus and then put that there. So that's going to do the same thing. And that'll toggle either key switch, uh, either button depending on which key switch is being pressed. And then we can get rid of that. And then the only thing to do is to modify our bypass uh, effect function here. And to do that, we're going to have to, we're not going to be able to use one of the contact standard functions because we're going to have to pass parameters in. So we'll get rid of those call keywords. And we're going to have to pass in two things. We're going to have to pass in the value. And we're also going to have to pass in the effect slot because each effect will have a different slot, presumably. Now, to keep it simple, I'm going to assume that the first button bypasses an effect in slot 0 and the second button bypasses an effect in slot 1. Just keeps it simple. Uh, so where we've got value here, uh, sorry, where we've got button here, we're going to put value. And we're going to get this value from whichever button has uh, been triggered. And then where we've got slot, we're going to change that. Uh, we're going to change that for the slot parameter. So when we call this effect, we can pass in the value, which is whichever button we're working with here. And we'll, we'll, we'll focus on this one later. That's going to be slightly different. And then we'll pass in the slot, and the slot is just the index, because it's going to be 0 or 1. And we will get that there. Now down here, it's slightly different. We need to have a callback for each button. And we can actually just pass in the button's value and the slot number. We could do this in a macro if we wanted to, if, if we had a lot of buttons we could do it in a macro but for two buttons just do it like that, it's easier. Now that all looks good to me but I am sure that when I press F5 we'll get an error because that's what usually happens. Uh, ah, it worked, brilliant. So let's see if it all works as expected. So I should be able to add a second effect now in here. So it's got to be slot 0 and 1 because we're using those array indexes. So this one should toggle the first switch. Yep. And this should do the second switch. Perfect. And we've got the key switches down here. That's for the first one. And that's for the second one. Yeah, that all seems to work fine. So hopefully you've managed to follow through what's going on there. Basically, we're just being clever and using the key switch index, uh, using the key switch arrays index to tie into the button arrays index. And then we're pulling the index out using this search function. If you're not familiar with the search function, have a look in the KSP manual. It's a very useful function for doing this kind of thing. I use it all the time. And um, yeah, using the, uh, uh, our own function like this for actually... Um, Bypassing the effect means we can save loads of lines of code 
and maintenance is really easy in the future. You just have one line here that you'll need to update. All right, I hope you found this useful and you've learned something that you'll be able to use in your own instruments. If you have found this useful, please give the video a thumbs up on YouTube and comment below if you've got any questions. And please share it on social media. And thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.